This is CNN Breaking News. Welcome back to viewers here in the United States and around the world. You're watching CNN Newsroom. I'm George Howell following breaking news this hour out of eastern Syria. To get you updated, U.S.-backed forces say they have defeated the last ISIS fighters in that region. The Syrian Democratic Forces raised their flag, as you see there, over the town of Baghouz. That was the final stronghold of the so-called caliphate. Just hours ago, they battled ISIS fighters who were holed up in tunnels near the village. And you can see in this uh, video here the firefight that played out during the nighttime hours. Our senior international correspondent, Ben Wiedemann, is in eastern Syria. He filed a report uh, just about an hour ago, but we heard from him uh, giving his first impression of the area around him just moments after the announcement that ISIS had been defeated. Listen. We are in the encampment uh, over which we were watching for weeks. Uh, bombardment, airstrikes, mortar strikes, artillery strikes uh, into this area. And it really is a wasteland. Uh, there are wrecked motorcycles and cars and trucks around me. You see the remnants of tents that people were living in. And most of those tents, inside the tents, people had built trenches, dug trenches to get uh, some sort of protection. Uh, so for me, this is quite an experience because we've been watching uh, from a distance as this bombardment was taking place. But uh, uh, now certainly to be in it is somewhat uh, surreal. But this is a historic day. Uh, the, we did hear from a spokesman for the Syrian Democratic Forces uh, that ISIS, the so-called caliphate, has been eliminated. And certainly it was a rough, long war against ISIS going back at least five years. So yes, uh, for the Syrian Democratic Forces and for the U.S.-backed uh, international coalition of, against ISIS, this is a significant uh, day, a long way, it was a long and difficult struggle, but yes, it is significant and it's quite an experience to actually see all of this around me. That was our Ben Wiedemann again, filed a report about an hour ago marking the defeat of ISIS there in Baghouz. Uh, joining now on the line to talk more about this is Lena Khatib. Lena is the head of the Chatham House's Middle East and North Africa program, uh, joining us now uh, from London. Good to have you with us, Lena. Good morning. Uh, first, let's talk about the simple significance of this moment. ISIS no longer holding any territory in that region after years and years of bloody war. It is a very significant moment because having territory and having a so-called caliphate was a very big component of ISIS propaganda that it used to draw supporters from around the world. Um, it went ahead uh, in terms of um, what it uh, said it achieved to its supporters um, ahead of any other uh, Islamic militant group in the world. And, and that was a massive, massive draw, which means this is now a massive, massive blow. Lena, the terror group no longer claims territory, but doesn't the threat still remain as the ideology is still embraced by some who escaped or survived the war and that threat of radicalization that continues? Absolutely. I think we should be very careful when we talk about defeat of ISIS at this moment. All ISIS has lost, which is, as I said, significant. It's lost territory, but the group itself has not been eradicated. As you said, the ideology of ISIS is still very much at large, and now they will try to use this loss of territory um, to portray themselves as victims and continue to use propaganda to try to attract supporters to exact revenge. At the same time, the group still has many fighters at large, estimated to be between 15,000 and 20,000 in the area um, around Syria and Iraq. Uh, so um, we are likely to see a surge in insurgency type activities by the group as it transforms into um, basically an underground militant organization. And what of those people who are now uh, homeless, stateless, caliphateless, uh, those women and children, ISIS brides who are now on their own, many of them left uh, in these many camps? 
Yes, this is also very significant. So in addition to the fighters, we have um, around 37,000 women and children currently detained uh, by the Syrian Democratic Forces. The fate of these women remains uh, and children remains to be um, uh, seen because many countries in the West um, simply feel nervous about bringing back uh, women and children who were basically living under ISIS and who belong to ISIS. Uh, we are yet to see a coherent strategy to deal with them, to de-radicalize them. And that means that we have a ticking time bomb on our hands as these women, um, in a lot of cases, still very much embrace the ISIS ideology. And there's a risk that they will raise their children to also embrace the ISIS ideology. So the ISIS problem is really much larger than um, something that can be just sorted out with military action alone. It took many, many troops coming together from many, many nations, uh, uh, many groups uh, to try to remove uh, this, this uh, footprint that ISIS had throughout that region. That has now happened. But as we see troops being drawn down, the United States has drawn down troops, the number uh, still remaining, still somewhat unclear. Is there a threat, a concern uh, that uh, if, if you let up just a little, uh, that the group could reemerge? Absolutely. The risk of re-emergence is very real. Uh, we always need to think back about what happened in Al-Qaeda uh, in Iraq uh, with Al-Qaeda um, around a decade ago when it was uh, largely defeated. The reports say there were at that time around only 700 members left of the organization in Iraq after the U.S. led a surge campaign uh, to target the group. However, um, you know, a few years later, we saw ISIS emerge from the ashes of Al-Qaeda in Iraq. And so we have to remember that military defeat is not enough. You need a comprehensive, very long-term strategy. And I emphasize the word very. We really need, I would say, a 10-year strategy to handle the ISIS aftermath. Um, the radicalization programs, uh, uh, addressing good governance uh, in the context of Syria, the political situation plays a huge role in why ISIS existed and will still probably exist even if not as a caliphate. So you need to address all these issues plus socioeconomic grievances in order to prevent an enabling environment to kind of exist that would then lead to the re-emergence of ISIS or something like ISIS. So the story is unfortunately very complicated. Lena Khatib joining us with context and perspective. Thank you again for your time today.